Hi, my name is Mr. C, and today we're going to be talking about pitch and rhythm. So, I'm going to start with a fun fact. So, music in its earliest forms was made to glorify God. So, early Western music notation was made by Catholic monks, and over time, most of their songs were used in churches. So, if you hear a piece of music and it reminds you of a church song, well, chances are it probably was at one point. So, moving on, I'm going to begin with pitch. Well, first, let's start with some definitions. Words that you're going to hear me use a lot are going to be staff, clap, pitches, or notes, and this includes the seven letters A through G, which we'll talk about in more detail. And I want to mention what an octave is, and I'm going to go through these one by one. So, And I think that's, that's about it for now. Yes, now, beginning with staff, your staff is, when you have music written on paper, it's, a, it's usually five lines, it's always five lines, and what you're going to find is something called a clef, which usually looks like something like this, I don't know if you, this looks familiar to you or not, but this is called a G clef, so staff lines, what am I talking about? You take a clef, and then using five line, using five lines, you're going to go starting from here, from the center. You draw a straight line this way, and I always remember from this one line I made, one below, and four on top. I'm sorry, three on top. <laughs> So here we have your staff lines with your clef sign, we call this the G clef. And now, next we're going to move on to pitches. So your pitches are going to be from the alphabet. We're going to borrow seven letters. So they're going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, and finally G. Now, what happens is, as soon as you get to G, it restarts. It doesn't go to H or K or L. There is no pitch for these, these letters. It's only these seven letters that we use in the musical alphabet. Cool, so now that we have that covered, I think, I think an octave is something that can be explained a little bit later. So, we're just going to Get that for now. Next, I want to I want to talk about. So next, I want to show you what the pitches or notes look like written on these five lines. Okay, so starting from the beginning of the alphabet, which is A, of course it is, A, do A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And we'll go right in. So this is our musical alphabet, A through G, and right, so I wanted to talk about the octave. Now that we have this 
visual demonstration of what it looks like on the stack lines with your clef. We're going to create something called an octave. So what am I talking about? An octave is eight letters away from your starting pitch. It will always be this. So this is A, uh, an octave higher than this A. So to get this in your ear and what it sounds like, it goes something like this. The further up, the further up the staff, the higher it's gonna sound. And then the lower you go, it's gonna sound low. So if I could uh, just sing you this scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Now, what I wanted you to detect with that example is that the pitches that are written lower on the staff line are going to sound really low. As opposed to the pitches that are way up here, they're going to sound high. Ah. Right, so anyways, that's pitch and how it works fundamentally with staff lines, the clef, and the eight letters in an octave. Right, so again, just so that you have it written out, an octave is eight letters away from your starting pitch. So next I want to talk about rhythm and how it works with into the standard notation of how music is written. So I'm going to rewrite this for you. I'll switch it up. I like using I like using different colors. So First, I want to introduce the longest possible note that you can play in one bar of music. So, some words that I want to write out for you to keep in your notes are bar and beat and pulse. No, yes, pulse. So a bar is typically separated by the lines in between, it's separated by the lines on the five lines of music. So it'll look like this. So here's one bar, bar two, and this would be bar three. Oh, and then also just so you know, whenever I do two lines going down, that means that is the end of the, mu the music. That is the end of this piece, <laughs> three bar piece. Anyways, so yes, this is one bar, and a beat is, for example, one clap. So what am I talking about? First, I'm going to show you what different rhythms look like. So you have your whole note, And I'm going to come back to these words over here, so don't forget them. Keep them fresh in your mind. Here is your whole note, right here, is one. The second one is going to look like this. The third one 
hold up like this. And I'm going to talk about all of these and how they're used. Right. So here, this is what you call it, your whole note. So write it down. Should have made more room. Here is your half note. You have over here your quarter note. And finally, I'll do this. Gotta get the left. your eighth note. So these are different ways of writing out music so that you know how long is one beat of music. So next I want to cover your meter. So there's different, there's, I'm sorry, <laughs> there's actually uh, three types of meter. But we're going to start off with the simple ones. So you have your duple meter, duple or quadruple, which it could be called, let me write this down. You will always find your meter in this region. Sometimes it could be four, four, or it could be also three, four. So I'll use the all the examples for rhythm. Let me write this down for you. Oh, missed this speech. So, all of this encompasses what rhythm is. So, down to the meter. So, there's two types. What I'm to talk about. There's two types of meter. You have your four four, and you have your three four, over four. So all this means is four beats per measure, three beats per measure. So going on, I'm going to write out an example. I'm going to use, and I'm going to want to use one bar for this example, because this is going to emphasize what the beat is. Now, we'll start off easy with a an example in 4-4, and I'm going to demonstrate what a whole note sounds like in 4-4. So we'll put it here at this A. There we go. Now, here it goes. I'm going to count myself in, and then I'm going to play this note. So, one, two, three, four, ah. and that's it. It's not longer than one bar, because it's telling you to feel four beats. Next, I'm going to just do it without the pitch, and just, just to, I'm going to use something called subdivision to feel the silences in between. So. I'll talk really briefly about what subdivision is, but this is a good, a good way to hear this, not this uh, pitch, and you'll get it. So I believe you, you can do this. So one and two and three and four and off, and that's what, how long this note is. We also call it the duration. So oh yeah, so okay. So one is one beat, two is its own beat, three is its own beat, just as much as four is its own beat. Now, right, so I'll write on an example of the subdivision that I talked about earlier. One, and two, and 
So these are all beats. This is a beat, and this is a beat, etc., etc. And, uh, hmm. Right, next I want to talk about pulse. So, this next example is going to be in 3 4. And for this example, I'm going to use one half note and a quarter note. So this would sound like this. I'm going to clap it out. One and two and three and. And I'm going to loop it now in a cycle to repeat it. So one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. So that was three repetitions of a half note and a quarter note in three four. So now I want to use the eighth note um, because they're written differently. They actually have flags that connect, so I'll show you what that looks like right now. This is the one that has the flag, so I would write it out like this, and connect it like that. So normally, if it's an eighth note by itself, the flag would just go down like this, but because there's two eighth notes and the, on the third beat, you're going to want to just connect them together like this. And we'll add one more bar to this, just so that you can kind of hear the difference between fast rhythms and the longer rhythms that, you know, whole notes, for example, that hold longer durations. And we'll end with a whole note. So now we have two bars in 3-4 that sound like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So now I want to feel those silences in between a little bit better, so I'm going to say them with subdivision out loud. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. So I'm going to pick up the tempo. One and two and three and 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 off. So that's what this would sound like, you know. So just to kind of double back over and cover what we just talked about. Whole notes hold, have a longer duration than an eighth note. So this has nothing to do with tempo, how fast the piece of music is. You can slow something that sounds fast really to where it sounds like it, it's a whole note for the quarter note, but I won't get into that right now. I'm sorry if that was confusing, but going on. Right, pulse. So with the pulse, there's something really fun about it because as I was speeding up, I was actually achieving a sort of flow. So I feel like the best way to talk when it comes to pulse, the best way to describe it is you know the rhythm so well, along with the notes, which we covered earlier with pitch, you know it so well that it begins to feel like almost a dance or something repetitive, repetitive that eventually makes the music a little easier. It's because if you just start playing really slow, the chances of it still sounding like a piece of music are unlikely. That's what I'm getting at. So, just to sort of recap and uh, summarize what I just talked about. I talked about pitch and how the standard notation looks like, how it's written. I talked about clefs, I talked about I talked about staff lines. I talked about uh, the octave. I talked about the notes and how we use seven letters from the alphabet. And I feel like 
that summarized the pitch pretty well. And then we talked about rhythm. And with rhythm, which we just covered here, there's in one bar of music, you can fit a whole line, a whole note, I'm sorry, a whole note, a half note, a quarter note, and an eighth note, and just about any combination, as long as you stay within the meter, which we also talked about. Let me write that out too, meter. And, uh, oh, this is what this was. You can have a four meter in 4-4, four, four, or you can have a meter in 3-4, four, or a meter in 2-4, etc., etc. It becomes more complex um, when you get into compound meters, but that's for another lesson. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm Mr. C, and uh, I hope this helped you understand the fundamental elements of pitch, rhythm, and music notation.